Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome again to Sunday School. Thank you for, for getting up early on a Sunday morning and plugging in to what we believe is the Word of God, and we uh, have all week to work and do all that we do all work. It's good that we can, we can just relax and set some time aside on a Sunday to dig into the Word of God and, and find out what it has to say about to us and about our lives. Many of us, uh, I'm sure in the past, or even now, want to know what the future holds. I mean, where am I going to be in three years from now or five years from now or 10 years from now? Who's going to be in my life? Who's going to be my circle? What job would I have? What house would I live in? What car would I drive? How will my bank account look in five or 10 years from now? And, and, and some folks will go to great measures to find these things out. Well, today God is going to foretell destruction uh, for people that have gotten too big for the britches, so to speak. And, uh, and God's going to bring them down. And nothing they could do, nobody they could talk to, could change what was going to happen to them in the future. So without any further ado, let's just pull this up and go right on to work here. And I hope you all can see that. We're going to just kind of talk about this in, in just a little bit of detail here. God foretells destruction. Coming from Isaiah chapter 47, verses 10 to 15. I'm going to begin with a few opening questions here. One is, can we put our total trust in anything or anyone other than the Lord? That's number one. Number two, how would you advise someone against visiting palm readers or witch doctors for answers regarding the future or their future? And three, should Christians believe in or make decisions based on their zodiac sign? You hear this a whole lot now in Christian movements uh, around the world. What's your, what's your sign is what they ask you. We're going to begin in, in the first part of our lesson. Part one is a failed confidence in Isaiah chapter 47, verses 10 and 11. And we see these folks had a God complex. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge it had not converted, perverted thee. Thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. And then the second part of this first part of our lesson, letter B, is God's going to give them a guarantee in verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall, pall, shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Then the second part of our lesson, failed defense. And letter A is futile future telling, verses 12 and 13 here. Verse 12 says, Stand, stand now with thine enchantment and enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries. Wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counselors. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things which shall come upon thee. Isn't that something? It says, shall come upon thee, not might, but shall. Then we see fiery fortunes, verses 14 and 15. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm it, nor fire to set before it. Thus shall they be unto the unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. Now I'm going to pull that down here. We're going to do a little, little commentary on, on what we see here. Let me get my, okay. Still working with this technology. Sometimes it works real good and, and sometimes not so good. So let me, here we go. All right. And let's look at it, just a little bit of commentary on the word of God here, because the word is the word of God is right. Somebody else is wrong. 
but the word of God is always right. So we're going to begin the commentary with the first part of our lesson with this failed confidence in verses 10 and 11 and this God complex that these people had. Babylon's wickedness uh, was the way of their, that they used that arrogant display of power, the arrogant power display, and they used that in a way that was designed to force compliance through fear and intimidation. And they even had the nerve to say, none see it me, which included all of heaven and all the men and women on earth, none see it me. And I want you to keep in mind that this prophecy right here about Babylon was decades before it, it even happened. But Isaiah, you know, before they became a superpower, but Isaiah was so certain that he heard the voice of the Lord that he writes, he writes in a future and in a past tense. He writes about the future as if the future had already passed. So this was a man of God that was inspired by God. He wasn't guessing. He wasn't trying to find something. He wasn't, wasn't well, don't let me get into that, how folks can try to prophesy. And, and so, so the Babylonian empire was viewed, and, and themselves, they viewed themselves as being above accountability. They saw, they saw themselves as being able to do wrong, and nobody could come in and correct them for the wrong that they were doing. And at this point, as a superpower, they had never suffered the consequences of their, what the commentary calls inhumane, I call it power tripping. And this inhumane power tripping, they could do it time and time again, and nobody was going to spank their hands. Nobody was going to come in and, and bring regulations against this, this Babylonian world superpower. And no consequences led them to, to believe that the unjust treatment was acceptable. And here's what I call it. A power proclaims practice philosophy. I have the power so I can proclaim, I can I can legislate, I can approve, I can, the, the practice or the lifestyle of power tripping because I have the power. The, the Sunday school calls it might makes right. But might don't make right because you're mighty and you have the power, because you have prestige and authority, because you're in a place of, of authority in, 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 the, in the political arena or on your job in a corporate arena don't mean that you can, you can change the definition of wrong and make it right. Don't mean that we can do somebody wrong and get by. We don't. It just doesn't work that way. So, so then claiming to be wise or knowledgeable apart from the teaching of the word of God is foolish. And I ain't got time to really read all this in more detail, but I'm going to read some of it. I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 29. And uh, let's look at verses, I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation, verses 14 and 15. Because of this, I will once again astound these hypocrites with amazing wonders. The wisdom of the wise will pass away, and the, intelligent of the, the intelligence of the intelligent will disappear. What sorrow awaits those who try to hide their plans from God? Who do that? Who do their evil deeds in the dark? The Lord can't. The Lord can't see us. They say, He doesn't know what's going on. That is that is delusional. Babylon trusted, really put their their trust in their political and their military power and their military strength, and they imagined that their steps their steps were mandated by a god. Not God Almighty, but by a God, small g. And they had a twisted, a real twisted self-image. Here's what they said. I am and none else beside me, which was a claim of Godhood. You know, in the beginning, Adam and Eve made that mistake trying to want to be like God because they, they listened to the wrong voice. And, and sometimes that happened to the, in the church of God today, in the, in the body of Christ, they listened to the wrong voice. And we all, all of us, 
uh, have inherited something. We've inherited the sinful tendencies to put ourselves in God's place. Did y'all hear what I just said? To put ourselves in the place of God. To where we're going to make decisions that, that we should make. And we're going we to say, Lord, I think this is how you would do it, Lord. And so since this is how I think you would do it, I guess I'm going to go ahead. I go ahead on and do it because this is how you would do it. This, this, this hymn is how you would do it. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I want you to read Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 2 when you have time. Phrases like, in their own eyes. This is, what, this is what the word says, in their own eyes. Simply put, that's self-delusion. And we, we can be delusional into believing that what we are saying and what we are doing is correct, and it is not correct. So we all have to watch something, class. We have to watch our personal tendencies to act like all of us, we are the ultimate authority in our own lives. It's the, the book stops here. I am the ultimate authority. Ain't nobody else over me. This, this is what these Babylonians were. And anytime we try to upseat the creator, that's crazy. Okay, because he is the creator. And I want you to read Isaiah chapter 5 and verse, and verse 21. Then we get into the part to where God is, God is going to give them a guarantee. Now, God's guarantee, as we say back home, is a guarantee. If God guarantee it, you can, you, can, you can rest on it, you can believe on it, you can go on home and go to sleep because this is going to happen if God, if God says it. The Hebrew word for the word evil implies a moral evil that was going to overtake Babylon and this is the punishment for Babylon's arrogant and wicked deeds. You see, don't be deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever a man sow, that, that's exactly what that man is going to reap. We should also note that God does not inflict moral evil on anyone. Let me say that again. God don't inflict moral evil on anyone. Listen, we do a pretty good job at doing that ourselves. You know, bring stuff on ourselves. Do things that we say, well, since I'm, I'm born again, I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. I got the grace of God all around me, and uh, he, God got this. And go right on down there and rob that bank. Okay, it's going to be some consequences. Like I said, we do a pretty good job of doing those things ourselves. So, so God don't inflict that on any kind of, on anybody. We bring those things on ourselves. I want you to read James chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, and 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But, let me, let me just put this in there. God does permit, allow moral and physical evil by allowing natural consequences as a result of what we did. If I go down here and rob a bank, the consequence is I'm going to get caught Go to jail, serve some time. Yeah, you can be born again in jail reading your Bible, right? Because you because what you did was rob that bank. If I'm, I'm out here speeding, driving 95 miles an hour as a child of God, yeah, I'm still a child of God, as he write the ticket and gives me a reckless driving ticket and lock me up. Yeah, the deacon, the preacher, okay, driving 115 miles an hour. Oh, well, that those are the natural consequences of the actions that I did. And God, and listen at this, also God is also known for strengthening what's called a pre-existing evil decision of the people, as well as, as well as inflicting natural disasters as a result of the evil decisions and actions that people make. You don't believe that? Look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a pre-existing decision. God allowed him to have that. And as a matter of fact, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh and the way he wouldn't let God's people go. You don't believe about that? Look at Genesis 19, Solomon and Solomon and Gomorrah. This was, this was not just a natural disaster, but a supernatural disaster. For God rained down fine brimstone on the city because of the, the evil had gotten so it, it had gotten so evil that consequences came. And for the Babylonians, the punishment that, that was going to come to them was going to come as a shock. 
It was going to shock them because they believed they were above reproach. They believed that they were not accountable to the wrong that they were doing. And when someone came and spanked them on the hand or censured them or told them, you can't do this, this is wrong, they couldn't believe it. It was a shock to them. And that same thing can happen today, which is why we have to be careful on how we raise our children. Don't tell them when they're wrong. I saw, I saw a while back where uh, a little boy slapped his mama. Slapped her two times. Stopped, and the grandmama said, don't, don't hit your mama like that, baby. Don't hit your mama like that. The, don't correct them when they're wrong. And then when they get into the real world, they're shocked. If you go and hit somebody in the real world, you, that may be the last lick your hand you swing, okay? Because the real world ain't going to say stop that. They gonna, they gonna, it's going to be some consequences. So we got, we got to tell them when they're wrong and lead them and guide them into the right way. But nothing could, could happen at this point with Babylon that was, that was going to prevent or mitigate the impact of the trouble that was coming down the road. They had done so wrong for so long. They were, they were beyond the point of, of saving them from trouble that was going to come down the road. Now, I want to get to sector, part two of our lesson that talks about failed defenses. And one part of these failed defenses is, is a futile future telling. And in verse 12, it talks about that. Enchantments, sorceries in the ancient Near East was meant to, to give the people insight into what their God, small g, the intentions and the desires of their God. So they use this dark magic and this dark magic was meant to manipulate their gods into doing what the people thought they wanted or wanted or what the people needed. Manipulation. You read, I want you to read about, uh, about the, the false God called Baal, B-A-A-L in first Kings chapter 18, verse 26 to 29, where the folks just humiliated themselves. And the man of God, the man of God mocked them that told them, listen, maybe he down there taking a nap. Y'all, y'all probably just ain't calling loud enough. He probably just can't hear y'all. Y'all call louder. And they just absolutely humiliated themselves calling on a false God that could not answer. But God Almighty, the ruler and maker of all mankind, God supreme, God omnipotent, God omnipresent, God omniscience will not and in fact cannot be manipulated. God don't play politics. God is not running for an office of the land. He is supreme. He is superior. Ain't no Supreme Court justice over him. And he can't be manipulated. He cannot be bought. So God don't play them kind of games. So I, Isaiah, Isaiah mocked, teased the Babylonians by encouraging them to continue in their worthless, magical dark magic practices and in future telling and dark powers listen at this was also widespread when the church was established but god but god's wisdom and god's power always was greater paul had to deal with that paul had some some evil folks uh, during the the church establishment had old woman running, running behind him oh yeah y'all are men of god Y'all are men of God. Had had folks that were uh, trying to get power with the governor, trying to and the, go, the governor wanted to brought Paul them down there. They wanted to hear the word. The governor wanted to hear the word, and they had this old guy down there trying to avoid. Don't y'all don't y'all waste no time with Paul. He ain't got nothing to say. Tr trying to avoid the word of God from penetrating the political powers that were. And then had this woman running behind him. Oh, great. These are great men of God. But Paul saw right through that. And we're living in, a, I want y'all to read Acts chapter 13, verse 6 through 12, chapter, and, and also verse chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. We got folks in the body of Christ now that are so hungry for something. And, and then they, we, got, we got little preachers out there that that's, they want to amen so bad. Can somebody say amen? Anybody, somebody, just say amen. They want agreement so bad to where they, 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 they believe their own press. And these little women come out, oh, you, hey, can't nobody preach like you. And they, they, they fall for that stuff. And don't see the, don't see the, 
Listen, the devil, they don't see him in it, okay? Just fall for that stuff and get caught up in something. I'm just telling y'all, we have to really, really, really watch and ask the Lord to give us a spirit of discernment. And then we see some bad advice in verse 13, okay? There's some bad advice. Bad advice is number one, time consuming and bad advice just drains you. Because once you've gotten the bad advice, now you got you got to live with the consequences of this bad advice. And Babylon did not realize that these counselors that was all around them were useless. And these counselors was, was really stopping them from discovering the truth about what was about to happen and also preventing disaster. That's what was going on. And so these astrologers and these stargazers, these monthly prognosticators looking at the sky, trying to see what's going on in the sky, watching the star patterns, were not going to give them good advice. I want y'all to read Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 2. So they had calendars, calendars that were believed to, to bless or curse certain days. And these calendars were drawn up the way they watched the movement of the heavenly bodies. They watched the movements of the stars. And these calendars were believed to, to help the people to act in a certain way on certain days, to act, to act, appro to act appropriately on certain days. But let me, let me give you another situation here. In Matthew chapter 2, we see a case here where they did watch the sky, and watching the sky led these wise men to Jesus. Now, this, this exception to the rule proves one thing, that God, God's mercy, God's great mercy, and God's willingness to meet a man where they are. But when he meet them where they are, they convert. They don't pervert. They, con they change their way of living. They change their way of thinking because they met Jesus. But in Babylon's case, if these, even if these these stargazers, these monthly pronosticators, if they knew the what and the when, if they knew what was about to happen to Babylon, even if they was able to read and determine, okay, something, is, something bad is about to go down, with nothing they could do to save that nation. They had done wrong for so long. They, 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 had, they, had, they had been beyond legislation for so long that now the consequences was, was here and they was going to pay the price. I want to I give a little sidebar real quick here. What, do, what, what does a zodiac sign mean? Let me just bring this in real quick. In astrology, a sign of the zodiac refers to 12 specific constellations or star patterns of the zodiac that the sun passes through. 12 different star patterns that the sun passes through. And a person's particular sign of the zodiac is one that the sun shines through in the month they were born. They call that, this, this is my sign. So, so it's, it's, a, it is a, it's really just a belief in astrology that a person's personality can be predicted using their zodiac sign. What do you mean zodiac sign, Ricky? Well, it, folks said, if I was born between March 21st and, and April 19th, I'm an Aries. If I was born between April 20th and May, and May 20th, a Taurus. May, 20, May 21st to June 20th, a Gemini. June 21st to July 22nd, a Cancer. July 23rd to August 22nd, a, G, a, a Leo. August 23rd to September 22nd, oh, he's a Virgo. September 23rd to October 22nd, he's a Libra. October 23rd to November 21st, a Scorpio. November 22nd to De December 21st, a Sagittarius. December 22nd to January 19th, he said, I'm a Capricorn. And then look at this, January 20th to February 18th, he's an Aquarius. And then February 19th to, to March 20th, look what she said. She said, she a Pisces. And here what folks ask, child, whatever you do, a, 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 a Taurus should not marry a Sagittarius. Honey, whatever you do, don't mess around with them Libras. If you're a cancer, don't fool with no leaf. Oh, the, the question is not when, not, not when you were born and what light shines through the sun patterns when you were born or the star patterns when you were born. The question is, when were you born again? That's the question. When were you born again? 
See, class, we, we got to really watch this because people of God can get so tied up and so tangled up with astrology and systems of the world and, and sorceries and witch doctors and hoodoo. Yeah, people of God go to who that's in the church of God, that, that born again, accepted the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ as the Savior, going to the palm reader. Read the lines in my hand. Going to the wish doctor. Going to the root, going in the woods, digging up roots. I'm talking about folks that's been born again. And that's dangerous. That's the trick of the enemy. And they mess around and get those evil spirits on them. And ain't nothing nobody can say to, to change them and straighten them out. They got that stuff on them now. Acting, you know. Woo. Ain't that. So, so, so verse 14 and 15 deals with something else. The people put their trust in these so-called wise men. The wise men that read the sky to guide the people on what they saw. And, and, and these, what I call yes men, these yes men, these counselors, with, 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 was going to be like stubble that was going to feed the fire that was going to burn the town down. These yes men. And sometimes this is something that, that, that leaders have to be careful of. Having counselors that are yes men. Everything you say, whoo, that's a good idea. And what you're saying is going to it's been tear it up. But because you got these yes men around you, that, whoo, hey, how you think of that? Yes men. Wrong counselors. That's going to cause the whole thing to just blow up. So, so the practice then of these uh, rich, successful merchants in Babylon led them to false security. If I'm doing pretty good, if I got a pretty good bank account, if I, I got a good, good credit, what I'm doing must be okay. No, that's false security. And Babylon believed that these so-called friends was going to keep them safe and these so-called friends was going to keep them secure when in fact it was just the opposite. Babylon and all their allies, Babylon and all their little powers around them, little, little, little small superpowers, were doomed. And when nothing, nobody could say or nobody could do that was going to stop what was going to come upon them. You see, you see, class, I'm going I'm to bring it to a close now. And we all have to be careful on, on, on getting a little bit of success, on, on, on coming up a little bit higher. You see, many of us now, some of y'all ain't like, well, I, I come from a night pot. I come from a wash pan. I come from an outside toilet. I come from riding a, a bicycle to a work. I had a little 20 inch. Then I finally got me a 10 speed. Okay, that's where I come from. So so, so now we got a, a little bit, just a, a little bit more. Now we're doing this and doing all the rest of it. And people, the people know your name now, right? So be careful that none of us is above reproach. None of us is above accountability. Nobody can get to a place or nobody can, people can't tell you when you're wrong. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. God foretold future destruction because these people in their arrogance, in their intimidation, in, their, in, in, in bringing in fear to get folks to comply with their demands, and all at the same time doing all these evil things, overlooking the Lord and saying, don't nobody see me. Don't nobody know what I'm doing. I got this. I got a secret that don't nobody know. Well, listen, let me tell you something. You ain't got no secret, okay, that God don't know. God knows everything. He sees everything and he's everywhere. And all of us got to, got, got to realize and come to that knowledge that he already knows. And the press would be, Lord, help me to know. Lord, help me to know that you already know. Ain't nothing you can say that God don't already know. Listen, listen, class. We ain't informing God. Lord, I, I know you're glad I told you that right there. Listen, I'm going to have to bring it to a close. Now, thank y'all for plugging into class today. Look forward to seeing you again next Sunday at the same time in the same place. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you. The Lord say the same next Sunday. Take care.